So you know, you know, these are talks. Let's actually see how the entire thing does work. So let me just take that up here. Yeah, so as you can see, the system is running on KU and as of now, uh, well, uh, all the entire uh, thing runs on the kernel. So there's no kernel and uh, kernel, uh, kernel and user and separation implemented as of now. So uh, you can see the keyboard and all uh, keyboard is working pretty fine. Uh, so speaking of issues which I did face in this particular kind of project, one of the big issues was one figuring out how interrupts work. Writing, uh, writing appropriate interrupts for different kind of drivers is a quite complex issue in the sense that you need to figure out how the, uh, how to write the different uh, drivers for all those uh, particular hardware uh, hardware you have and then making it work on well, a 32 bit system can be quite challenging another of the issues was actually making stuff print so uh, the, one, of the, one of the major issues you guys will face if you are actually trying to do operating system development from scratch is that there is no console per se. That you can't keep, uh, if something goes wrong, there is nothing which will print, okay, there is an error here or there is something going wrong somewhere. You actually will have to debug through assembly or you will have to write a driver which handles the errors and then prints it back onto the, onto the screen. So, this entire thing, this green thing which you see, that's all written that the the cool thing is you can actually control it exactly what you uh, each individual pixel available on the screen. So you have to, you have to write drivers which uh, actually print those things on the screen itself. So uh, that in, uh, that further involves uh, further uh, that also involves different types of algorithms like uh, you have to figure out some way to rest, uh, you have to figure out uh, 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 some way to actually display the fonts and then uh, align them onto the screen and then. You have to figure out a way to get user input and print them onto the screen itself. So all in all, it becomes a quite interesting task. Uh, so um, yeah. So as of now, uh, these are the updates for terminal OS. I could not show a lot of that at a demo because well, I I will have actually change the code itself. I have not made an exact you know uh, uh, what what you say an exact. Uh, different functions for implementing different sections of the code, it's all there. So, as of now, uh, talking about the updates from terminal OS is that, uh, well, uh, yeah, we uh, you could you could uh, write some files, you could create some files, and you could read some files in the operating system itself. Uh, you can, you, I don't have a working speaker, so you can potentially play some 16-bit music, uh, the old 8-bit times music. If you, remember, if you guys remember Mario and everything, you can probably play that music. Uh, so, one of the major issues we will face is basically uh, memory management. So, you will have to write some kind of a physical memory manager as well as a virtual memory manager for that. And that involves implementing paging. And paging is one of the, <laughs> personally, uh, it's one of the most difficult things I am facing as of now. It's still a work in progress, so it's not updated per se. Uh, and if anything goes wrong, as always, your system will triple point and you will have no idea why. So, um, and many more. So, there are a lot of issues which you will face, you guys will, you guys will face for sure, that's for sure, if you are trying to do this. But it's really fun and I would suggest you guys to at least dabble some bit into this. Uh, uh, yeah, so why do this? One, uh, since I, I mentioned before, I was a, I'm a triple E uh, student, so I had an interest in electronics and I wanted to see how exactly these things work. Another is, you, you, uh, when we, let's talk in the context of some particular domain, say 
your actual OS. So that's why you get that size thing. Today we don't need that much because we have extremely ha fast hardware. So nobody really cares about it. You don't even notice that the Instagram is running first. It's just like a couple of seconds, right? Back then we didn't have that kind of thing. So Instagram is itself used to take a minute or two to come, boot, and all those issues. Then the problem was that Intel, you mentioned x86, right? So during that time, there was the architecture wars that were going on. So Intel was trying to compete with the Ultra Spark with this thing, and then they introduced something called speculated execution, which is a complete disaster, right? The kernel never worked, and all those issues used to happen, so they started to adding a lot of things to, to sort of do that. So you can really get the OS down to a really small level with real-time operating systems and all that. So to be us, really cool, what are you doing? So one more thing I actually forgot to mention, this is one cool thing which I actually found pretty recently. Well, all of your modern day high line sizes, whatever. From a, from the point you actually turn on your PC for one particular second or something like that, for a limited period of time it actually acts an access an 86 microprocessor. It's called 16 bit mode and then it shifts to 32 bit mode and 64 bit whatever. So that's one of the cool things I actually found. So technically you can trace all your laps and everything back to the 1970s. Yeah. Yeah, everything had to be backward compatible, right? With the IBM yeah. PC. That's because they did not actually figure out a way to boot to 32 bit did anything. So if it if it ain't broke, if it didn't if it's not broken, then it broke. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you.